affords these really uh, seriously injured individuals the opportunity to feed at group kills and also to be protected by the rest of the group. Several hours have passed since the kill, and the injured female has eaten her fill. She's joined by her cubs. While they eat, she nurses her wounds. A male comes along. He's her two-year-old son. She tolerates his presence. In fact, this social behavior helps defend the kill from scavengers until they've all eaten their fill. The saber tooth thrived as long as there was prey and adequate cover from which to attack it. But while life seems abundant, this saber tooth family are already facing a threat that will prove decisive. Around them their valley home is changing and their reign as the top predator is about to end forever. Having reigned as top predator for a million years, this saber tooth along with the rest of her species is suddenly facing extinction. The fossil record at the La Brea tar pits reveals that a catastrophe overwhelmed many species. Not just the saber tooth, but many other animals disappeared too. About 11,000 years ago, something strange happened, and we find no more of these saber tooths anymore in this tar pit or anywhere else in North America. And along, lost alongside them are the dire wolves and the mastodons, the mammoths, the camels, the horses, all the things they preyed upon. In fact, this saber tooth is probably one of the last saber tooth cats that existed in North America. In this land of giants, many of the largest animals, like the mammoth, died out. Dating their remains shows this coincided exactly with the end of the last ice age. For a hundred thousand years, global temperatures had been around 10 degrees Celsius colder than today. But by 11,000 years ago, the climate was warming up. In Arizona's Sonoran Desert, paleobotanist Julio Betancourt has discovered compelling evidence revealing what conditions were like when the saber tooth ruled and the drastic change that was about to overwhelm it. Today, the Sonoran Desert is very dry, but Julio's discovery reveals that it wasn't always like this. And evidence for this comes from an unlikely animal, the pack rat. This seemingly unremarkable rodent reveals a major environmental change was unfolding at the same time as the saber tooth disappeared. All because of how its ancestors built their nests 12,000 years ago. Well, here's what all the excitement is about. This is actually a pack rat nest right here that was occupied by a pack rat in this particular case uh, about 12,000 years ago. Pack rats use these rock shelters for cover and they bring in a lot of plant material from about 50 meters, 60 meters away. The plants the pack rat built its nest from have been preserved in a unique way. The pack rat oftentimes pees all over these uh, piles of, of plant remains, and as the urine evaporates, um, it crystallizes and holds all of this material together like amber. But most significantly, the preserved plant remains confirm forests grew here during the Ice Age when it was colder and wetter. The beauty of it is, is the, that the preservation is actually exquisite. We see here, for example, that there are the needles or the leaves of a, of a pine. We also have uh, junipers and oaks. So we know that there were pine, juniper and oak woodlands covering most of the Sonoran Desert at the end of the last ice age before uh, big herbivores and things like saber-toothed tigers became extinct. But the pack rat evidence from a thousand years later tells a very different story. The pine and oak forests were disappearing. The ice age was coming to an end. 
heralding massive environmental changes that continue to this day. So the overall trend for the southwestern United States and Southern California um, since the last ice age has been towards hotter, drier environments and towards more desert vegetation. But how could changing vegetation be linked to the extinction of a carnivore like the saber tooth? While the change didn't affect the female and her cubs directly, it did affect their food supply in vital ways. Ironically, paleoecologist Greg McDonald believes it actually increased it. The biggest mystery that we have to look at is the fact that not everything goes extinct, that you have animals that do survive. Here in North America, you have mammoths, mastodons, horses, uh, they all disappear. And yet other groups of animals, like the North American antelope, the American bison, uh, a lot of those animals did survive and did quite well, increased in numbers and, and spread out. Horses didn't return until Spanish conquistadors reintroduced them a mere 500 years ago. Scientists must explain their extinction and also why the bison survived and thrived. To solve this puzzle, Greg must investigate how different animals cope with the changing vegetation. This is not a job for the squeamish. Talking about why some animals became extinct and other ones survived, one of the clues that we can look at is actually in their dung. If we tear apart the uh, droppings of a buffalo and look at the plant fibers inside, we can see that they're very fine, and that's because they chew their food twice. If we look at horses, animals with a simple stomach, you can see that the plant material is much coarser. What this means is, is that buffalo, the ruminants, get a lot more nutrition out of the plant material than what the simple stomached animals like the horse can do. As the variety and nutritional value of plant life changed, it now seems the ruminants had an inbuilt evolutionary advantage. The variety of plants that's living in an area is changing. And this probably creates a, a crisis. And those animals that are better at getting the nutrients out survive, like the bison, whereas those that are not as good are going extinct, like the horse. But for the saber tooth, the proliferation of bison means hard times. Despite the fact she's beautifully designed as an ambush predator, she's becoming peculiarly vulnerable. In drier, more open country, there's less cover, and she'll struggle to hunt using her highly evolved ambush skills. She'll need to chase down her prey, but she simply isn't built for speed. Bison farmer Larry Toller appreciates how hard it is to hunt bison. To kill a bison is damned hard. They don't like to separate from each other. They stay very, as a very close, tight-knit group. They protect the babies. To get one separated is almost impossible because the herd doesn't want it to happen. The ability to hunt successfully, always a tricky business, was now even more difficult. Not only was there less cover to ambush from, Fossil discoveries show Greg McDonald that the bison were evolving a powerful new defense mechanism. One of the things that we see happens is they become smaller. This does have advantages though because a smaller animal does not require as much food for survival and you can pack more animals into a given area, which means you can have larger herds, which has the advantage of more eyes, more animals on the watch out for predators. The growth of large bison herds was another terrible blow to the saber-toothed's chances of survival. As the Ice Age ended, solitary prey is hard to find. Many prey species have disappeared. Others, like bison, have safety in numbers. So while there's plenty of meat on the hoof, Catching it is very hard for an ambush predator. Despite being beautifully designed to pounce and kill, now everything is working against her. In bigger groups, the bison spot danger more easily across the open land.
they've seen her coming and can easily outrun her. Superb adaptation to an Ice Age environment didn't help the female Sabretooth once that environment changed. In a different world, the predator at the top of the food chain is even more vulnerable to annihilation. Starving, the female Sabretooth has had to abandon her cubs. she'll never reproduce again. Forced to survive on carrion, the smell of rotting flesh lures her to the deadly tar pit. Hunger overpowers her sense of caution and drives her to the edge of the black abyss.